Welcome back into the Rowdy Studio. I'm Buzz Cutler, sitting alongside Bass Masters, getting ready to go to Thunder Valley. Bristol Motor Speedway. It does not get any better than Bristol Motor Speedway. There it are some tracks I like equally as well, but I don't like any better than Bristol. No, no. I like Martinsville maybe yep. equally as well, maybe Richmond equally as yep. well. But, Dover. But nothing. Don't forget about the Monster Mile. But Dover. come on. Thunder Valley, Bristol. Oh. The concrete jungle, that's what I call it. You got Kyle Busch looking to make what? Make it five out of seven? Five of seven. You got Jimmy Johnson, who since his breakthrough win in 2010 has reeled off a series of top five. He's now comfortable at Bristol. He, it's like a light switch turned on for him. He got it. But before we get too heavily into the drivers, let's talk about keys to this race. Well, you know, we used to say track position here because it used to be a one-groove track. But when they reconfigured it, put progressive banking on it, it made it a two, sometimes a three-groove racetrack. You can get by people on the top if you're faster than them. It used to be you had to have the bottom to go anywhere. That changes strategy a little bit. You don't have to be quite as conscious of track position at this track. It's still very, very helpful to start up front and stay up front because it's tight enough that you're going to have wrecks and problems. So the first key is just stay out of the mess. Well, I, I would say there's another aspect of that that's worth pointing out in terms of track position and starting up front is that means you've got your choice of pit box, it which helps. really could be a key to winning this race. Look what Brad Keselowski was able to do yep. out of that pit box uh, last fall. Now, they probably changed up the timing lines at this point, so you can't game the system quite like he did. But having a good pit box at Bristol and being able to get out, especially on that last stop of the day, that is really important. You know, the other thing, too, is I think you have to look at how drivers are able to get through these corners. They're very high bank corners for a short track. Kyle Busch has a knack for getting through them and getting back to the gas. I wonder if he's just going in just a tick easier than some guys and getting back to the gas just a tick sooner. It's tough to drive it uh, that way. It's not the same as Martinsville in that respect, but I think there's a way that he has of getting through the corners and beating guys through the corners that you have to really master. That's what Jimmy's been able to figure out. That's why he's he's better here now, is he understands how to get through the corners better. I, I also think the thing Kyle Busch does that perhaps he does better than um, a lot of people in the field is he finds a way to make that top groove work for him, yep. right? Because old school Bristol, of course, before 2007, there was no top groove, but Kyle Busch has found a way to use that groove consistently, and I'm not sure that everybody else has done that uh, as well. Yeah, I think Kyle has the best feel for this place. Clearly on the reconfigured Bristol, before that it was his brother Kurt, and now it's clearly Kyle. I mean, Kyle took just 14 races to tie Kurt Busch and Jeff Gordon for five wins here among active drivers. And don't forget, he also has four nationwide victories and three truck victories at this track. He's automatic, man. I think he's clearly got to be your favorite going into this race. He does, and you also have to look at maybe a Carl Edwards. He's got a couple wins here. I think he probably has to be a little disappointed about the way he ran and finished at Las Vegas. Wouldn't he like to come to Bristol and show up and win this race? Because Carl Edwards hasn't won in over a year now. Yeah, and Carl Edwards' teammate, Greg Biffle, you wouldn't normally think of Bristol as a Biffle-style track. Of course, he's best known for his prowess on downforce tracks, but he's very consistent here. He has, I think, something like, what, four top tens or, yep. um, in, in the past handful of races. No, he's very he's very consistent. He's good here. He's won in the Nationwide Series he, here. He's, he's led uh, over 70 laps on two different occasions since the repave. Never won here, but he's off to such a strong start. I don't think you can overlook Greg Biffle. Kevin Harvick, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Jr. has the best finishing average here of anybody in the past uh, 10 or so races. So, you know, you got to look at Dale Earnhardt Jr., maybe more than 10, maybe more like 16 color. You know, but uh, he's, he's very good at Bristol. He's good on the short stuff. The short stuff is where Jr. really should shine. So I expect Jr. to be in the mix here. You know who I would expect to be good here is Ryan Newman because he loves Dover, and he's so good at Dover, but he just doesn't quite show up here the same way. And Dover, of course, is considered a, a bigger version of Bristol. Yeah, but Dover is just not a short track. And I think, you know, Ryan Newman's better at Richmond and New Hampshire and Phoenix on the short stuff than he is at Bristol or Martinsville. All right, well, there you go. For Bassmasters, I'm Buzz Cutler. I'm going to be at Bristol this weekend interviewing some drivers for track hospitality. So um, I got March Madness duty. March Madness duty. Well, that's cool, too. It's cool, man. It's cool, but he took away my Bristol. All right. <laughs> Come see me at Bristol. Away my Bristol. Come see me at Bristol. I got you covered. All right, I'll be there. Rowdy.com. <laughs> Say it like it is. <laughs> Say what like it is. Why?
property.com. 